So, um, so uh, the name of my presentation is Behind the Screen of the Cyber Bullying. My name is Desiree Vassell. I am a senior at Mount Wells Township High School. I'm a Bachelor Girl Scout in Troop 1083. Um, and I chose to do my Gold Award on Cyber Bullying because I have had personal experiences with it and because it has become such an issue in our technology obsessed world. So, um, uh, my personal experience happened when I was in fifth grade. Um, the cool social media to be on at that time was AIM, AOL, Instant Messenger. Um, and this was basically just instant messaging back and forth between uh, different people. You can update your status and you just talk to people on your friends list. Um, and in fifth grade, um, a boy in my class and I decided that we liked each other. And another girl in my class was not too happy over this. Um, so uh, her and a couple of her friends were sending me some uh, nasty messages on AIM. And one of the specific incidents, incidences that I remember was um, I updated my status to watching Rachel Ray. And in response, she updated to her status to anybody who watches Rachel Ray is stupid. Uh, while this does not seem like um, a big issue, it was enough to impact me and to um, show that there is an issue um, in everyday life and that it's something that should be talked about. Um, so, we'll be talking about a couple things today. We'll be looking at traditional versus cyberbullying, so um, how they're similar and how they're different, and some statistics regarding cyberbullying, the top social media between 2011 and 2015, some of the consequences that can come from cyberbullying, and how you as parents can help your children if they are being cyberbullied or to pre prevent them from being cyberbullied. So we'll start off with the differences between tra traditional uh, bullying and cyberbullying. Um, so traditional bullying is probably the bullying that you guys are most familiar with. Um, this is bullying that happens face to face. Um, it is defined as, uh, the word bullying is to defined as street abusively to affect by means of force or coercion. Um, and uh, traditional bullying tends to happen while you're in school, so um, on the playground, in the lunchroom, uh, during classes, between classes, things like that. And for this reason, it has become known as schoolyard bullying. And um, in this type of bullying, both the bull bully and the victim show higher rates of depression and anxiety. And um, some of the consequences that can come from uh, from bullying, and this differs from cyberbullying. So cyberbullying um, has been defined as the electronic postings of mean spirited messages about a person often done anonymously. And this anonymous aspect of cyberbullying is very important to why it is such a bad, uh, bad thing for children these days. So the um, this anonymous aspect allows bullies to go further with their bullying, so there are no social pressures that are limiting them from how far they can go within their bullying. So there's, um, in the case of traditional bullying, eventually if it gets bad enough, a bystander or an adult will step in um, and stop the, the, that incident of bullying. Whereas online, if um, there is, uh, if it is done, being, if it is, if it is done anonymously, there's nobody to know who it is, so you can't step in and say, hey, you should probably stop this. Um, and another difference between traditional bullying and cyberbullying is that uh, cyberbullying can happen at any time of day. It can happen 24/7. And this is this is also um, there's also known as what is known as the spillover effect, where um, bullying that happens online often spills over into the the students' um, school life, and um, so they're bullied both in person and online. And for this reason, um, the victim feels as if they cannot escape their bullying. And one of the arguments against cyberbullying is that, well, you can just turn off the device, you can just close out the app. However, this is not the case because the victim knows that as soon as they turn that app back on, as soon as they turn the device back on, the messages or the photos or whatever it is, however they're being cyberbullied, is just going to be there waiting for them. Um, so for this reason, um, it, that is one of the reasons why cyberbullying is so much worse than traditional bullying. Um, and in the case of cyberbullying, um, only the victim is showing higher rates of depression and anxiety, um, and the bully is not, and this is differs from traditional bullying. And this is most likely due to the fact that the bully is not seeing the effects that the victim is having because they are behind the screen, because they're not face-to-face. -face. They cannot see 
how the, how the victim is being affected and what type of um, issues that they are going through because of this bullying incident. So now, So now I'll talk about some statistics that go along with cyberbullying. So it has been reported that between 20 and 25% of students have experienced cyberbullying, um, and about 16% of these students have been bullied within the past year. Um, and in the 1990s, there were 15 school shootings, and 12 of these 15 school shooters had experienced bullying in some form. Now obviously, technology was not as prevalent in the 90s as it is today, so most likely this was done by traditional bullying. But this just shows how um, a case of bullying can push somebody over the edge to do something that they may not have done if they had not been bullied. And um, teens that are uh, cyberbullied are between two and nine times more likely to consider suicide than if they had not had a bullying incident. And that's a very big difference than if somebody had not had this incident. Um, the rates of suicide for 10 to 14 year olds has gone up by over 50% in the past three decades, so that is a huge number. Um, and of the 50 states in America, uh, 49 have uh, currently have laws against bullying. So now uh, we'll talk about the differences between social media in 2011 and 2015. Now obviously uh, this is only a four year difference, so you would think that the differences would not be um, that radical, but you can see that the top social media has changed uh, very much within these four years. And that just shows how rapidly uh, social media in general is changing and why it is hard for parents to keep up with what their children are doing online. So in 2011, the top social media website was Facebook, and many of you are probably on Facebook yourselves. Um, this is a website that allows for a user to create a profile, and they can connect with other people to make friends, and they can post status updates, uh, share pictures, message people directly, um, and things like that. And this can be used to cyberbully by um, having the bully send um, the victim a direct message that is threatening, or um, if they can post a picture of somebody that they don't want on the internet, or um, they can post a status update about the person. Um, the second um, top social media in 2011 was MySpace. Um, and this is very similar to Facebook. Um, it's a, a profile website where you connect with other people, you uh, can share pictures and things like that. However, the difference between MySpace and Facebook is definitely the privacy settings. MySpace is much less private than Facebook. Um, is, and um, there was a very famous case about cyberbullying and MySpace in 2006, so this was very early on um, in the technology era, and there was a 13-year-old girl named Megan Meyer. Um, she had, had asked her mom if she could uh, create a MySpace page, and her mom agreed. Now, Megan had just had a uh, falling out with her good friend, um, so she was looking for a way to connect with other people online, um, and she made a connection with a 16-year-old boy, and they talked back and forth for about a month, um, and they became very close. Um, and one day, the boy went on and was messaging Megan, saying, I know what you did to your friends, I don't want to be associated with you anymore, I don't want to have to deal with you. And this and um, many other factors uh, led Megan to take her own life. Um, and it turned out that the boy that she had uh, connects with was not a teenager or a boy at all, but rather it was the mother of the her ex-best friend that had decided to go online and pretend to be somebody so that you can, uh, so that she could um, hurt Megan. And obviously this shows how you never know who you are talking to online because they are hiding behind something else that they may not be. And that's one of the dangers that comes along with using the internet. Um, so, the next uh, top social media in 2011 was Twitter, and Twitter is um, a social media that allows for um, status updates and tweets, 
and these are 140